crisp, crisp hand plant. Oh, shit, you have talking points and everything. You're doing this like legit. I'm doing this so legit, Jeff. Uh, I'm with Jeff Glucker of Hooniverse. We're in a 1991 Mitsubishi Montero. We're gonna go drive. A little bit later, we're gonna take this thing off the gnarliest off-road course within 30 miles I can think of. But first, information explosion. Temp normal is that lower black hash. Okay. And if it goes to the middle, this light is just a dummy light for maintenance every 50,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And this light is, means it's something vacuum related in the four wheel drive. When you put the brake down, this one will go off. These two will stay on and it doesn't matter. Do you remember a few weeks ago when Jeff and I went out in my helicopter and I did a lot of kind of walking through like, just so you know, we, it's gonna bounce a little bit when we're on the ground. Yes, yes, and yes. And like, this is totally normal. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of that right now. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this gauge cluster later in the remarks, but first, interior. Oh, thank God we are moving. I am a sweaty man. I just put the AC thing, on. That helps, that really helps. Okay, here's a good thing to talk about real quick. Yeah, what do you got? Don't turn the wheel all the way full lock to the right because the tires will rub a little bit, uh -huh. and I'm working on that. Okay, yeah, so when I hear like... But if you just want to go over this curb, you can do that. Is that cool? Can I? Just slowly, sure. Okay, let's see what happens. This is not part of the interior, but that was a very satisfying thing to do. Oh! Oh man, I'm Montero-ing! I'm doing it! <laughs> yes. When we're talking about interior space, it's hard to beat the practicality of a box. Yes. So like, talk a little bit about the interior in terms of family friendliness and yes. cargo space. Family friendly for sure. No. Uh, normally there's a car seat back there, but I have a press car this week, mm -hmm. so it is in that. But when the car seat's back there, there's plenty of room. If you need to fold down the second row, you can. There's already good room behind that. You can actually remove that whole second row. Oh yeah, um, So okay. How hard is that to do? Uh, it's like two things. Really? And I haven't... I don't know how heavy the seat is, but it's two things to get it out as far as Ripped I'm aware. dude like you, what do you care? Ugh, I got this seat. Um, and so, yeah, there's plenty of space. The, the least amount of space mm -hmm. is up here. So I have that seat as far back as it will go. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good. If you're bigger than me, yeah. it would get tough. And I'm 6'3", 210. Wait, is this your seating position? Yeah. This is the only occasion where yes. you and I have the exact same seating range. Like that's because the, the wheel, I don't want it higher or lower because um, like we're almost entering bus territory. And then how is, how is it for your daughter getting in and out? Sometimes you have to have a little bit of help just because she's four, uh -huh. but she's getting closer to being able to do it. And there are grab handles right here, oh, uh, which handles. helps. Downshifting note, second gear synchro is a little crunchy at times so the blip was okay but i should have double you over blipped it. yeah double clutching helps a lot lower so like go to second when you need it most uh -huh. if you can stay in third there's a good amount of torque stay in third okay the helicopter's going to bounce a little bit on the ground right. and then when we get going yes. uh, don't be surprised if <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is a good moment to quickly interject rear window test so that's what that looks like uh-huh this is a pretty comfortable seat, man. I'm getting like a, a reasonable amount of static lumbar support. Um, it's a bit vertical for my normal seating position, but uh, I don't want to mess with your seating position and this is working great. You want to see something cool? Depends on the cool thing. What happened? Now I've unlocked the factory bouncy seat. Don't worry, it won't stall. Um, so if you're off road, the seat has its own what? up and down. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you are unlocked right now. So uh, you'll only feel it minimally because I think you, you there's a, a spring to twist mm -hmm. that adjusts like the driver's weight to affect how much it goes up, like to dampen the force. I don't think I've ever driven a car that has that. Right, it's neat. It's pretty cool. The only other vehicle I've driven that has it is a first gen US Mercedes Sprinter van. Oh it. yeah? Yeah. Oh, that feels right too. Yeah. Kind of like, like if you're driving a tour bus. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you know this about me, Jeff, but I'm a bit of an armrest aficionado slash Yeah, snob. okay, sure. And the armrest situation is gonna be a hard fail in that there is not one here, and the only place I could rest an elbow here is this you have to be up handle. or up high. Can you and do high? I, I can, it's a nub. I can go high, but it's, that is like, not only it's, oftentimes there's plastic under there. This is like, is that metal under there? Uh, hard that's metal? That's the door, yeah. Yeah, the door is under there. 
The good thing about this lower non armresty thing is if you flip this up, mm -hmm. this is just size right to be like a cup holder because there oh, are no okay. cup holders. Yeah, yeah, the absence of cup holders. Ooh, that's that's going on the permanent. Record. It is, yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a hard two elbows down <laughs> on the now standardized Mike Amusio Elbow Comfort Index. Yes. There's a beautiful simplicity to this. I uh, haven't looked at the climate control um, at all. I could operate this while driving and not crash into that HRV in front yes. of us quite easily. Yes. That is very intuitive. Also, I kind of like that the little human figures here look like they're wearing like a baseball hat or something. Yeah, I never I actually never looked at that. Huh. You're right. <laughs> in a very recumbent position too. Right. They're like driving in like a race car. Yeah, legs out. Uh, also, wow. as someone who flies a helicopter, I think you'll appreciate the top center gauge. I do appreciate that. So uh, let's say we're driving and then like conditions decay from VFR to IFR. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we're, we need to fly by instruments. I'm going to be able to keep this thing nice and level right. with that little uh, gauge. I like that it's, it's, not, it's not digital. It's literally just floating in liquid. Do you have to change that out every 12,000 um, miles? I believe this one is low on liquid because this is a junkyard replacement. Mm -hmm. It's very common for these to have no liquid. The first one I bought, it was like all broken way over here. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to work, so I found a whole cluster. Now, the problem is that works. Oil pressure doesn't. <laughs> As I make a blistering right turn onto Atlantic Avenue, style! What I love about the Montero is what I loved about my Suzu Trooper and most SUVs of uh, 80s, 90s vintage. It is a straight up square. You could and draw this. It immediately conveys to you as a uh, casual observer, I know what that thing does. Right. You put stuff in it and you can take it places. I painted the front bumper black. Mm -hmm. I'm going to paint the rear bumper black and I painted the grill black as well and I got that replacement grill from a company in South Korea called Mohenic which over there uh, does frame off restos of these and basically turns them into like G-Wagon equivalents. It's really? amazing. Yeah. Um, but then I added the wheels, uh, friends with some of the 1552 people. So those are the uh, those are the TurboMac HD classics or the TurboMac HDs. There's two models. Those are 17s I want to say. The B-roll will tell us. Yeah, the B-roll will hey, help. Hey, look at the B-roll. That's what they are. And then BF Goodrich KO2s, because that's like a, just an unstoppable, very good-looking tire that also has good on-road manners. There's no real, like, it's not, oh, it's not mm -hmm. roaring like a bro dozer. Yeah. Um, and it's not, that size isn't putting a strain on anything mechanically. I've driven these tires in Baja, Mexico, in buggies and Raptors, and anything you could throw at it, it claws through it, and mm -hmm. it's still comfortable on-road. Have you done any kind of lift or do you plan to? If I do a lift, it'll be just enough to eliminate that rubbing, though I suspect there might be a slight steering issue, much less a suspension issue. Um, yeah, it's dead on center, but that's like an old vehicle thing. No, but it's fun though, because you get to do this thing. You like, get to do that. You get to do this when you drive a new Jeep Wrangler too. So uh, <laughs> this is not going, uh, th there's no negative points here. Right. This is kind of fun. It looks like I'm, uh, uh, I'm Cary Grant. Yeah, you're doing car. a movie? Yeah. yeah. Huh, let's go get the dames. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Jeff, do you watch any of these videos? Yes. No, you don't. No, Needless no. full throttle acceleration. Oh. Wee. <laughs> that's what that feels like? That, that's it. Well, hey, real quick before we move on from exterior, uh, two notes. At 100,000 subscribers, I will review a windowless white van. It'll probably be creepy. Hey, who knows? Jeff, maybe you'll join me. Yes. One way or another. You're good at this YouTube man you do the right call outs and like this is why my channel sucks no no your channel is fantastic uh, i'll also mention at 50,000 subs and you haven't heard this one i'm going to reveal a terrible dark secret about my hair I that's like true it. that's true can you guess what it is you have plugs <laughs> like, I, don't <laughs> I love the speculation last question about the exterior i do have full coverage when did you <laughs> snorkel oh it came like that yeah prior owner I have to double check to make sure it is cut all the way through to the intake and actually functional. Oh, really? So it'd be super lame if it wasn't. And if it isn't, I will make it functional. Okay. Should we figure that out now? Maybe like a, go uh, get a sawzall? We're real close to the Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Cut my truck up. Tony. In motion. Tony Montero. Oh, I was going to bring that up a little bit later. Sorry. But a quick Sorry. tease for remarks. The name of the car is Tony Montero. Unofficially, it's Tony Montero. The first one I looked at was all white, which the name was funnier for that one. Totally. So it kind of stuck, though. That's a very And we're working name. on potentially a blip shift shirt for this vehicle. Maybe a good place to start the in motion section is to talk about the um, the shifter. It's not that uh, 
that rifle precision no. that I'm used to. No. Is there anything and you it can likes it likes it a there yeah, there are things you can do to tighten it I'm up. I'm joking. I don't care. This, <laughs> okay. this is oh, a that was my answer. My my thing are yes and I don't care to do them. <laughs> yes, I think that's that's an appropriate response. I do like that. You, I kind of for my oh, physicality, yeah, sure. I have to like lean to the right to get it into fifth. So we tried a needless full throttle acceleration. We'll just say it's needed right now. That's full and in first gear. Yeah, boy. Okay, I mean, it's not not accelerating. That is not the reason why you would buy a 1990 no. Mitsubishi Montero. This is not about power at no. all. And I would imagine, too, in, it, in the proper environment, that is adequate power. Like, if you take this thing off-roading, it'll be just fine, right? Also, this is the big engine. What Our friend Lynn Woodward, she has the four-cylinder. Remind everybody, what's under the hood? Three-liter V6. I think when it was new, at the most, it made 160. I'm totally what's guessing. What's the engine? I don't know. Uh, Give it a tap. It's never done that. Kick the kick kick the. That's that idle speed controller that is needs to be cleaned. It's going to go down. Give it another kick. It's not the pedal down. Yeah, see now it'll be fine. Welcome to old cars, Micah. Um, <laughs> oh god, there's a ghost in the accelerator. Yeah, yeah I was uh, revving at like 3,500 RPM and I wasn't doing anything and I thought. Is this some of that unintended yeah, acceleration? Yeah, it's, an, it's so secretly an Audi. Um, yeah, which I mean, in this so, car would probably be a helpful thing. But <laughs> I just was just checking it when you went between shifts to see if the idles dropped, and they did. So it was, it was just a weird. I need to clean the idle air controller. I like bringing Micah things that are not good and perfect. Yeah, this isn't an NSX on a camping trip. This isn't uh, <laughs> a bunch of other cool shit. I have said that the most boring car to review is a sensible mid-size sedan because everything is just fine. Yeah. That car right there, uh, what do you got, a Corolla hatchback or a hybrid? It's fine. It's fine. It does everything fine. There's really nothing to say. Yeah. This, there's a lot to say. For example, we, we talked about it earlier. The steering is so fun because you can be constantly engaged. It's almost like the Autopia ride. Oh, listen, oh, listen, listen. Yeah. Yeah, there's a squeak. A little squeak and everything. Oh god, it's charming. So, I do drive this on the highway. Uh huh. How's, how's I it feel? cruise at 70, 75. I I pass traffic. Uh -huh. I weave in and out like a true Californian. I drive it because I still like to drive quick. <gasps> Did it just do it again? No. Or are you just perfectly that a, matched? That was a perfect okay. seamless shift a second. Good. And it's actually really easy to uh, heel toe this. Oh yeah. Because uh, the pedal plays. Oh, you're right. That's that's pretty good. Oh god. Yeah, I don't know why that Genesis let them go. That's like, this is not a traffic spot to do that. Yeah. People in California, specifically Southern California, uh -huh. it is such a great place to be a fan of cars with some of the worst. Can I, I've been swearing. You bleep these out? Yeah, yeah, if you're not, okay, we have Sensi, the sensors are bird. There's literally a little bird that will come up and cover your face. Perfect. We are YouTubing the out of this thing. Let's so let Sensi. The worst drivers. Good job, Sensi. One last thing I'll note in the in motion section, I love cars from the 80s and 90s because of the super narrow pillars. Yes. Outward visibility in this thing is stupendous. Like no matter where I look, I have a very clear view. Yeah. And also because you're up high, you can kind of see, there's like this 360 ring of awareness that nowadays you'd have to emulate with a, an array of cameras yes. and a, a vivid digital display. I don't need any of that stuff. I can just look around and see literally everything. Yeah, yeah. This is a sad moment. So normally, if oh. I want to drive something on dirt, this is the spot. It's all uh, kind of occupied with me. Oh, really? You? I like thought you were joking about a spot. You have a dirt spot here? This is literally like my one dirt spot. Be but careful, you know what? you're Oh, that's right, that's right. I heard a little bit of that there. Yep. Okay, I've got a backup spot. Okay. We'll uh, drive there while we do remarks. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Are we boring no, you? No, no, no. Oh, I just, no, 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 no. I'm, you take I'm, your time. Would you like a little nappy poo in no, the middle of the remarks no, no, section? No. I'm just, I'm daydreaming about food. If you think that daydreaming about food while trying to make a YouTube video is a pretty cool thing, be sure to hit that like button. See, I'm YouTubing I'm the out of this thing. Good at this. <laughs> hey, Jeff, how much did you spend on this car if that's not too much to ask? It is and not. when did you buy it? I don't think it's been a full year and I bought it for 3500 which was just a little bit more than I wanted to spend on it, but I really liked the I liked the two-tone or almost three-tone paint on the outside. 
and then LS, which means it was the full, fully loaded for its time, mm -hmm. hence the bouncy seat. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Limited slip rear mm -hmm. and actual, not leaf, but coil rear suspension as well. Um, it has cruise control, which doesn't work, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. um, I've spent more than that mm -hmm. since I keep a spreadsheet. Yeah. Sadly, I've had to fix a few things along the way, and I'll just say this. I'm under 10, mm -hmm. Okay. counting purchase price. A couple of remarks. The gauge cluster, what I love about these little warning lights, this feels like what would pop up if you were flying the Millennium Falcon and then something was wrong. Yes. It's got that kind of um, 70s future Yeah, vibe, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's a really neat little touch. Uh, something you also don't see in modern cars, uh, the little, um, the little uh, wing windows here. Yeah, quarter windows, windows are the best. I had those in my 65 F100. My year Mercedes was the first year it didn't have them, mm -hmm. and I missed them so much that I thought about swapping in doors from a 73 Benz just to get those those back. What? Which seems needlessly useless. Old Mercedes over there. Hey, there it is. Synchronicity. Tell me about the audio system. That is a Clarion M508, which has a bit of an 80s vibe to it. For anybody who's a fan of, say, uh, Matt Farah mm -hmm. uh, at the Smoking Tire, he might have put one in both his SL and his Porsche. I think it fits the look of the car. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. It sounds good. I just did front speakers. Yeah. I went to install my own rear speakers. And as soon as I started to do it, I punched a hole in the speaker no. when the screwdriver slipped and I no. swore. And no, I, no. Yeah, I have this weird love-hate relationship with wrenching. I love doing it. I'm always trying to learn more mm -hmm. and I'm also bad at it. That's so it, it actually makes for fun. I wish I was filming when I did that because uh -huh. it was literally like, you can't make this uh, up. Also, welcome to the only off-road space in all of Long Beach. Yeah, we're testing This is the, the one oh hill. God, this is it. I'm, I'm going downhill and I want to tell We you could have shot this by my house. I'm close to like trails. Yeah, no, no, no. This is part of the vibe. That's we, we, funny. we do things in the most half-assed way possible. Long uh, Beach off-road yeah. gang. Yeah, and then I think they, they locked this one off, but look, you can It used to be a thing? Through. Yeah, you used to be able to go up and over this too. I'll tell you, Jeff. This 1991 Mitsubishi Montero yeah, is cool. ably handling this very, very easy How great your seat. section. It, the little bit of bounce is really nice. Oh, oh, and then I can use the excellent visibility to back up. Camera not required. Okay, let's see if I can make this. See no. how you don't get full lock to the left? Yeah, that's not gonna, this is gonna be like a multi-point turn, but that's okay. By the well, way, you definitely don't need four-wheel drive at all for this. Oh, God, I know. And yet, you know what? For maximum effect, what would it take to put... Um... I don't know, because I haven't touched it in a while. <laughs> Hi. That dude is whipping. That guy is totally whipping. Doesn't give a shit. Yeah, that looks fun. So tell me, how do you get into four-wheel drive? This has auto hubs, so you don't have to get out. That's another reason, LS trim. I'd go neutral. Four highs, just up, up and to the right. right. Yeah, see, now wheel lock, it says. Wheel lock, okay. Emotion factor. Yeah. No, 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 you shut up. This is, that's a, uh, a oh, lead into that. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Damn it, you're ruining my video, Jeff. I hope you do outtakes. I mean, we don't, we don't do outtakes because if it's worth doing, then we leave it in. Oh, okay. There's no such thing as an outtake. Wow, <laughs> I like that. So talking about the emotion factor, uh, I'll quick give my perspective. Uh, my first car was an Isuzu Trooper, 1986 a tro uh, Trooper two-door. It had an idle issue. Oh. Not unlike the vehicle we're driving right now. Okay. And uh, that idle issue would manifest at uh, stops where when you would come, it was a five-speed manual, and you'd come to a stop, and the engine would just sh shut down after you drove it more than like maybe, you know, five miles, right? Okay. So what I would do, I would put it in neutral, like yep. I've done right now, yep. and I'd uh, use my left foot, I would Just brake, ride the... and I would ride the throttle. And this is when I first started using left foot braking. By the way, I don't know if I've done anything more controversial on Micah Drives than left foot brake really? in a Tesla. People are flipping out Why? about uh, left foot braking. Learn how to drive. And oh, it's is like, it Tesla people though? No, it's, it's people who don't know that they think left foot braking is what you do when you don't know how to drive. Wow. And actually they're, they're kind of right. Left foot braking is what you do when you're a total amateur and somebody who really knows how to drive. Go, go talk to any rally driver. Totally. It's, it's a learned skill that you need to be an accomplished rally driver. Drive an F1 car. Which foot are you using to brake? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the best drivers on the planet. Uh, exactly. And me, but I'm just saying, like, it's not like I'm an idiot. Uh, I can brake with the right foot, which I'm doing right now, but I can also brake with the left foot. Right. And then I can use that to tap the throttle and do cool stuff. Stop screaming at me, and that is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, because you're wrong. I mention all that because for me, driving your Montero puts me back in that 16 year old Micah headspace. Right. And I really like it. 
Like this is, it's kind of bouncy and loud, but it's so engaging. It's uh, elemental and it feels like you're doing something. And I really like that. For you, what is the emotional component that made you buy this and makes you want to continue to own it? Uh, the initial thought was that I really wanted an FJ60 Land Cruiser, but they're priced so dumbly. And so I started looking in this direction, the more affordable Japanese 80s, 90s box off-roader. Mm -hmm. And then I got it and I found the one I wanted and the price was very right. And then every time I walk out to it, I'm just like, it looks kind of bad, yeah. like more bad than I am. Mm -hmm. And it's something cool about driving it. I like uh, vintage SUVs. I was also looking at Range Rover classics, which are a tough sell and those are going up in value and some like discoveries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is approachable, affordable, relatively easy to work on mm -hmm. most of the time. And um, <laughs> yeah. unless you're Jeff Glocker, it's yeah. very easy to work on. Right. I'm very happy with it. And uh, it's the coolness factor. My daughter likes it. She says, mm. she, she has literally said, make sure we keep that so I can drive it. And I was oh. like, I'm, I'm like, how do I sell this now? So uh, motion factor strong? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Synopsis. In synopsizing your 1991 Mitsubishi Montero, uh, I'm remi reminded of a few factors. One, very square. Two, kind of yellowing. Uh, three, I said three. Three, uh, it's a joy for children of all ages. Your daughter and you both connect on this car. Yes. Uh, to me, the uh, encapsulation of your Montero is SpongeBob SquarePants. Square, yellow, kids and adults love it the same. What about you? How would you synopsize the essence of your Montero? <laughs> I know that's a tough one to follow, calling it Sp Spongebob. As a 39-year-old man, I still watch a lot of cartoons, so I, I'm going to yield to Spongebob. Okay. One last time, I'm going to YouTube the out of this. If you like the video, please like it, and to subscribe, that means that 100,000 subs, yo! <laughs> you handle the kissing, I'll handle the words. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll review a windowless white van. 50,000 subs, I'm going to tell a terrible dark secret about my hair, and I... I'm excited for you to find out what that is, too. Have you blown past my channel already? No, 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 not yet. No? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure when this video comes out, so maybe. Oh. Hey, and actually, uh, that's a really good admonition for you. If you haven't, go subscribe to Jeff's channel, too. He does some really, really cool stuff. That thing you guys did down in Mexico was super sweet. Baja, thank you. So good. It's one of those videos where you put so much work into it, and you know no one's going to watch it, and that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> We drove buggies in Baja, and I really had a good time. We shot, we worked hard on it, and blah, blah. It the was really the good. Hooniverse is the YouTube channel. Do well, I get to pit my Instagram? You get to, sure. It's, in fact, uh, Future Evie has already put the uh, graphic down oh, below. Okay. Are you going to thank Future Evie? Thank you, Future Evie. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jeff, this was really fun. Uh, last thing. Did you have a good time, uh, Micah, driving your, your car? Yes, Would you I suggest did. other people do it? Yes, give Micah your car. Would you like me to come review your car? And as indicated by what we're driving now, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be any old thing. Uh, I, I really want to find somebody who has like a, an Isuzu Vehicross because they never got to drive one of those. Yeah. Or maybe something I used to drive, like if you have a Honda Del Sol or something. If, the, if you live in the greater Los Angeles area or in California, let me know. I'll come review your car. And you can have just as much fun as Jeff is having right now. Look at how happy he is, guys. He's so happy. <sighs> hold, hold, and we're done.